At any point we're doing these area calculations and evaluations using double integrals and then we are looking at a trigonometric function, the calculation can get a little tricky simply because the inverse trigonometric function integral will come into play. And I'll show you that with this example. I'm Mr. Ish and I'm welcoming you here for this double integral application y equals cosine x. If you want to be a little more clear, we can even say x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0, bounded by these regions 0 to pi over 2, here is 0 comma 1, and you know the cosine function will come right here, y equals 0, x equals 0, so we're looking here at this region of space. You want to integrate this, but we're doing this by means of double integral to determine this area. Very quickly, just for reference sake, as comparison, area with respect to x, we're doing 0 to pi over 2, we have a top boundary curve and a lower boundary curve, which is your x-axis. Top boundary curve is just cosine x, lower boundary curve 0, y equals 0 is irrelevant. The antiderivative is sine x from pi over 2 and 0, upper limit, lower limit, and your area should come out 1, and that's our reference value. How do you do this by means of double integral? We're looking at this interval right over here, or integral, these set of limits which will integrate upwards. That's what we're going to do. And this integral over here will have the left hand follow straight up, so there's no deviation. But this right hand is going to converge in that direction, so we need to have this equation. y is equal to cosine x. Since we're going upwards, the equation must be the x form. x is equal to arc cosine y. This here is going to come right here in this upper limit. 0 is your lower limit. Your integral with respect to dx is not hard. It's just 0, but then you can have this arc cosine y. This entire definite integral will integrate upwards with respect to dy from 0 up to 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So that's your upper limit for your y integral, 0 to 1. Now you have to do this. It's not hard. From here you're getting an x arc cosine y and a 0. You're doing basically the difference of the two and you know what that's going to be. It's just going to be arc and cosine y or inverse cosine y. 0 is meaningless. This here will come into your dy integral, but not as a constant or coefficient, but as your actual variable because it has y. And that right there is where the integral of this will come into play. When this dx integral is done, now we're feeding into the dy integral. It's this arc cosine y, 0 to 1 dy. Now, check this out. We don't have to show you all of this procedure and what the antiderivative of this is because you can use integrating by parts. Your setup for that would be u is equal to arc cosine y, du will be equal to minus 1 divided by square root 1 minus y square, and v would be the integral of what remains, which would be dy integral, and that would be y. Then you know you would do uv minus integral v du, or just take out your textbook and refer to the reference sheets and pull out the antiderivative, which is nothing wrong. If you do that, I have the antiderivative and I'm going to put it for you right here. Yeah. It will be y arc cosine y minus square root of 1 minus y square, and we're looking at it from 1 and 0, upper limit 1 and 0. That's all we have to evaluate and we'll get this area, which should be 1. It should be equal to 1 and it will be. We'll do this properly. We'll do the upper limit entirely, and then the lower limit entirely, and the difference. We'll have a 1 arc cosine of 1 minus square root of 1 minus 1 square which is a 0 and this is my upper limit coming in now let's do 0. 0 times r cosine of 0 all of that is meaningless and then minus 1. What are we gonna get from here? You can put your calculator here on the RAD mode or think about it. The cosine of a specific angle always gives you a 1 and that angle is usually a 0 and a 2 pi. From here you're getting a 0 which will 0 all of this out and this is already a 0. The only thing which ends up remaining is this minus minus 1 which is going to be 1 and that right there is your answer. You don't even really need the calculator if you have memorized some of those angles in terms of their values and their inverse trigonometric values. Anyhow, all of this zeroed out, the only thing which remained was a minus minus one and that's one. And I've shown you this calculation procedure is good. This area here is equal to one. We've done it here by means of the traditional single integral method and we've done it here by means of your double integral approach. That's what I'm showing you here for this video. Have a good day.